Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I thought I would start a new series just called Tips and Techniques for Watercolor Sketchers, and particularly those who are interested in kind of boosting the drama or pow in their sketches. So welcome to my very sunny studio. I've been trying to control the light this morning, but not having a great deal of success. Anyway, let's go. Okay, today I thought we would start with shapes and shadows. Uh, shapes are so important when you're using watercolor because they permit you to break your scene into some larger areas and therefore that permits you in turn to use really juicy watery flowing multicolor washes uh, i'm not someone who does particularly well with a highly detailed scene in terms of the watercolor so sometimes i will opt to draw the detail but not paint it at any rate back to shapes so today we're going to use a scene that's here in San Miguel de Allende, one of my favorite places. It's the sort of terraza in front of Las Monjas Church, and it has these enormous trees that are just amazing. And so we're going to try to sketch that today and break it into three major shapes so that the first pass that we're going to take our multicolor washes on those three shapes. One of those shapes happens to be a very large shadow. So that's why I call this session shadows and shapes. In fact, this tree casts incredible shadows on walls and the ground, etc. So unless you're really dealing with the shadows as part of the beauty of the composition, it kind of misses what uh, the potential for the drama and interest. So let me first show you the picture that we're going to work from. Okay. Okay, here's the photo of the terraza I was telling you about and one of the enormous trees, there are actually three. I think one is right behind there, but these two have blended so much that I'm treating it as one. Obviously the shadows here. And so it's a composition in light as well as in these beautiful shapes of this wall, the tree and the shadow. There's a man there sitting on the bench and we'll get, I mean on the wall and we'll try to include him as well. But really it's about these wonderful shapes and shadows. Okay. Let's talk while I paint this sketch. And I did this sketch in a workshop recently. So I'm using the video from that workshop to explain what it was that I was doing. Okay, onward and upward. Let's start with the first shape, which is the wall. Its local color is a bright yellow but much of the wall is in shadow. So I like to stick with the local color family. So it's the family of yellow. As you gradually darken the wall, moving into the deeper and deeper shadow, I think that approach to shadows on surfaces like this helps maintain a very bright color rather than using, say, complementary colors to uh, neutralize the color of the shadow. I also go right across the tree so that I don't interrupt the flow of this wash. It's not going to matter. The tree trunk is going to be very dark. So that's just fine. Now I'm starting with the second shape, which is this enormous tree canopy. Uh, instead of painting with green, I usually start with a yellow of one kind or another and then drop in and brush in blues so that I feel it's more interesting, it's got more contrasting colors in this multicolor wash. Now this tree is quite a challenge because in fact, as you saw from the photo, it's extremely dark. 
I don't want to do a black tree, even though it almost looks that way. So I'm mixing in uh, the yellow and the blue and trying to pay attention to both the values that I'm putting in there, but also all of these nice little sky windows or whatever <laughs> they're called, leaving the whites here and there so that it feels as though there's actually sky pe peeping through the various branches. Now, this is the first wash or first pass. So I try to get as much color variation and as much value variation as I can in the first wash. But I know that I can always come back. I usually do a second pass just in the darks, just to boost the darks. And you'll see that I do that later. So meanwhile, we'll just do the first pass of these main shapes. Uh, I believe that I'll make just a little bit of adjustment here in terms of boosting the dark values a little bit, making sure that the paint doesn't pool around the um, tape. But other than that, this gives you a good sense of how I would approach such a large and kind of complex shape. Just having fun introducing the various colors and letting them flow. I try to touch it as little as possible. By the way, this darker color that I'm adding is a perylene green. It was all yellow and blue prior to this addition of some perylene green. I don't mind going over the trunk again either because that's very dark and we'll deal with that next. So I've added the trunk uh, very simply. It's enormous. I just wanted to have the color flow somewhat into the green canopy. And I'm lifting out to get some contour, although in fact you can see very little detail of the trunk. Now we start the fun shadow. Now cast shadows like these take on the color of the surface they're cast upon. In this case, gray stone. They also take on the color of what's casting them. So the yellow um, wall is part of what's casting them and the tree with all of its blues and greens. So in painting this shadow, I started with moon glow, which is a, a very uh, lightly violet gray from Daniel Smith. It's a fantastic color and use that as then the stone. Into it I dropped the yellows and the blues in order to show what is uh, affecting this cast shadow and make it a multicolor wash just like all the others. Also cast shadows often are bluish and cool because of the sky that is a very much affecting the colors of the shadows. It's important to, again, make sure that there's value variation even in the shadow because under the tree it's deeper and darker. And to get as much detail in the shadow as you reasonably can, like the bench that's casting this shadow is making all these little tiny shadows. And I simplified it, but it did give the sense that the bench had see-through parts to it, which you'll see later. Now we're getting to the detail and boosting the darks. These are the second and third passes that I usually give to a sketch after having done those large multicolor initial washes. In this case, I'm doing the bench very simply. Um, as you see, I had painted over it both for the wall and the shadow because I want that to show through the pieces of the bench. And I also don't want to stop the flow of those large shapes just to get around a bench. So it's much more convenient to go right through it. And I know it's going to be dark, so it works really well. Now, many sketchers feel as though to do the detail of something like this bench, you have to switch to your pen. And to do it both dark enough and detailed enough 
with a brush is impossible, but I'd like you to feel challenged to use the brush and to mix a nice deep dark. It's very possible to do that. This, in fact, is probably mostly perylene green. These benches are sort of a green metal. Um, I'm not going to finish the bench here. I do that after I was finished with the workshop. We were running out of time. But I'm putting in uh, some of the other details, um, which will include now the man who's sitting on the wall, who you can barely see. But there he goes. And that's why I didn't care about painting right over him as we were doing the washes. Because again, when you come back with your dark details, you go right over those washes. Now I'm starting to boost some of the darks. This is what I mean by boosting the darks. You, wherever the deepest darks are, and for example, in the, the lower part of the tree, I do a second dark wash, but I'm trying to make it minimalist and to protect as much of the first wash as possible. And here's the final product. Okay, I hope that was helpful and you got some inkling about how I would approach a sketch like that. Let's take a quick look at the uh, final result. So here we have it. Since the video, um, I did do a couple of things brought out some white. I use um, this one, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Brought out some white to add a little bit more of the sort of peepholes or sky, sky holes or something they're called, I'm not sure. And around the edges as well. And then of course a little bit of white on the bench for the reflections. So, that's it for today. Um, I hope you've got something out of this and I will have more tips in the future. So stay safe, have a wonderful day and enjoy sketching.